Fabulous. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, we are here for the Chamber Skills Series presentation on the front lines of customer service. And our Chamber is so grateful to be able to provide this offering free of charge to our Chamber members um, because of the generosity of our sponsor, Lake Superior College. So speaking today on behalf of Lake Superior College is Daniel Fanning, the Vice President of Institutional Advancement and Government Relations. So hi, Dan. Happy birthday. Uh, thanks, Chris. You're here today, <laughs> so take it away. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to keep my remarks brief. I know we're all excited to hear from Ted and the presenters today, but I just want to say on behalf of Lake Superior College, thanks for, for making time for this. What a great turnout. And the, on behalf of Lake Spirit College, we're just proud to sponsor this event. And we were all about community and education. So this is really just a great combination of, of what we believe in. So proud to work with the chamber on this. And really just on behalf of both LSC and the chamber board, Chris, we just appreciate your work on this. I know it's been a challenging year, juggling everything and in person and online. So we just are really grateful that you keep pulling these off. And we're just proud to, to be a small part of it. So Ted, we look forward to hearing from you. And thank you all very much for being here. Hey, Dan, thanks so much. At this time, I am excited to introduce our speaker, Ted Schick. Ted is the owner of Schick Corporate Learning and a simply inspirational speaker. He contributes these beneficial topics to our Chamber series often, and we are really pleased to have him today. So just as a quick reminder, um, as Ted is presenting, we will not be doing a screen share. So please put your video on speaker view. That will give you the best presentation. Um, and also feel free to submit questions or comments into the chat. We will go ahead and share those um, when we are ready. So hi, Ted, thank you so much for speaking for us today and uh, take it away. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome everybody to my living room. I, I, I cleaned up today because I knew you were coming. And just, just so you know, the bathroom's down the hall on the left. And got some Fig Newtons in the pantry if you're hungry. But this is, this is, this is fun to do for you on the front lines of customer service. I'm speaking to you from Friedenburg Township. So a few of you know where I'm talking about. It's north of Duluth by about 32 minutes. You can see that little black dot on the map. That's, that's where I live. So I'm not, I'm not too far away. The only thing that we have close to where I live is the Minnowet. So if you know where the Minnowet is, you have a sense of, of where I live. It's about three miles from the house. I was driving by the Minnowet and, and they're still hiring. So if the speaking thing doesn't work out, I can always get a job at the Minnowet. I, I think I know, I think I know what I gotta do. It's gonna work out just fine. So many of you know me, I, I spent 20 years serving my country. I was an enlisted man that came up through the ranks. So I became an officer about halfway through. When I left, when I left the United States Navy, I, I taught high school in the Duluth School District for about five years. And I even had the good fortune, and I know I have some Cirrus aircraft people that have logged on with me today. I even had the good fortune of working for Cirrus aircraft as well. I've been on my own now since 2009. So it's already, it's already 12 years. I, I like my boss. He, he lets me take a nap if, if, if I get tired in the middle of the day. So 2020, if you're a speaker and a trainer and you require audiences, it's been, it's been kind of a tough year for that. So I, I have a lot of time back in my living room and look at me, look at me, look at me back in my living room again. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I think sometimes we think that we are resistant to change, but really we can do it can't we, when we have to. And it really is courage and creativity that all of us have had to employ to get through this, this year and a half, going on two years, courage and creativity. So I've been thinking about who's out here today and Chris Johnson sent me the roster. I don't really have a, I don't really have a, a hobby, so I just study the roster. It's like a who's who. It's like a who's who of Duluth. I've got everybody here from the skyline all the way to the city of Duluth, all the way down to Hampton Inn and Duluth and Canal Park. I mean, everybody's here. I'm kind of humbled by the fact that there's so many pe people here. Are, are, you, are you eating your lunch right now? Are you eating a sandwich? So this is, this is good. This is, this is 50 plus, Chris Johnson tells me. 50 plus have signed on today. You know, you, you folks are way 
too young to remember this, but when I was growing up in Bloomington, Minnesota, there was a show called Romper Room. And the host used to look through this magic mirror and she would pretend to see kids out there in TV land. And she'd say, I see Bobby and I see Susie. And I always waited there. And she, and she never said Theodore. She, she never did. But I was, I was looking at, I was looking at the roster and there's some people that I know on the roster that I just wanted to say, I see Amber and Jessica and Elizabeth and Laura and Marsha and Kathy and Wendy's here, Gretchen's here, Susan, Naomi, and Angel. Now, someone's going to write me and go, you forgot to say my name. It's all right. But thanks for, thanks for signing on. Thanks for signing on. So with this, with this particular setup, I made this so it's like, it's like the most feel of an in-person presentation that I can possibly create. But if you do want to speak to me, just, just tell me. Because Chris Johnson's monitoring the chat for me, but just tell me, say, "Hey, this is Gretchen," and you just and just and so I know who's so I know who's speaking to me. For years, I have delivered the four pillars of customer service, and I'll just bring those four pillars up. So there they are. Towards the latter part of this presentation, we're, we're going to come back to these four pillars: but experience, relationships, reputation, and problem solving. In your organization, to really have that customer service that's effective, that is extraordinary, you're really working to touch, contribute, and, and really all four of these pillars. You want to be able to you want to be able to be able to impact all four of these pillars to have that extraordinary customer service. I really do believe that customer service is three things. It's, it's what we bring. It's behaviors, things that we do or don't do that we can teach. And a lot of today's presentation is about those behaviors. And finally, incentive. What, a, what an interesting word. What am I talking about? Does everybody in your organization have an incentive to display good customer service? What an interesting question. Does everybody, because I, as a solopreneur, as someone that runs his own business, I obviously have an incentive to display good customer service. I'm all out here by myself. But you have to ask yourself, if you're looking to have that really quality customer service, does everybody have an incentive to do so? Who's my customer? Well, I've already been talking about it. I've already been going through the roster. I have a good sense. Who is your customer? Well, you are probably the best one to answer that. But it's, it's about knowing your customer to the best of your ability. I'm a big fan of doing my homework. I would like to believe that as a speaker, one of the ways that I differentiate myself from other speakers is I do my homework. If I'm speaking to mutual insurance companies, I go visit mutual insurance companies and I figure out what they do. When I speak to school district cafeteria workers, I go eat some school lunches. When I speak to electrical linemen, I've hung out with Lyman. Look, look how clean my vest is. The, the other Lyman wouldn't even talk to me. Look at that. So. And I was spoke to housekeeping. I spoke to housekeeping at a resort in central Minnesota. And I spent a morning cleaning rooms. Whew. That's, a, that's a tough gig. That's why I, when I stay in hotels, I always leave a note for housekeeping. And a little, and a little tip, a little love in the form of some money. Because that's, that's a tough, that's a tough kid. But doing my homework makes me a better presenter, makes me be able to connect with my customers. And, and you're no different. You're no different. We all serve someone. We all are serving someone. So this is, this is brand new. So what you're getting today is brand new. It's called the on the front lines of customer service. When the pandemic hit for the speaker and trainer, and I kind of already gave you a sense of how that was, when that pandemic hit in March of 2020, my schedule cleared. There was nothing left on the schedule for the year. People that I had a pretty full year schedule that everyone would just call and, and everything was canceled. And I didn't quite know 
what to do because there really wasn't programs in place yet for small businesses that was going to take a while and the virtual training world really hadn't taken off quite yet and so i didn't know what quite what to do so what i thought i would do is what i've always done which is to take care of myself as a self-reliant man i went and got a job i went and got a job at fleet farm i actually i still i still have the shirt in case they need me this was oh my goodness does it still fit i haven't gotten too big have i so it's you know i tell you what that was some excellent field research i have to tell you when it comes to you know sometimes when speakers you you talk about different things all the time but when you get reimmersed in that environment I'm thinking, I was thinking about all those things, moods, composure, what it means to be a professional, giving direction. It, it, it was nice to, in a way, even though it was a difficult time for me to get refreshed on all the topics that I think about. So we're talking about that frontline customer service today. That's, that's what we're talking about in the trenches, in the trenches, customer service. Just warm us up a little bit. We're gonna warm up our chat box with Chris Johnson. So when I was at Fleet Farm, thanks Sporting Goods now, thanks Sporting Goods, we were always out of, we never had in stock four things. Thanks Sporting Goods, name as many as you can. Go ahead and put in your chat box for me things that we never had in stock when I was at Fleet Farm. I'll wait. Chris Johnson, you'll tell me. I will just name them off as they come in. Yes, yes, yes. Watch, you're gonna be besieged, besieged with items, watch. Ammunition, True. baseball, guns, ammo, <laughs> bikes. Bikes, never had any. <laughs> More bikes. Yeah. Let's see. Anyone else? Come on. No one else? Boats? Boats? Yeah, I'm standing next to the only kayak that we had. It was kayaks and canoes. Yeah, mm -hmm. kayaks. And, and you know what? I never saw Chris Johnson. I never saw a trampoline ever. So, I mean, people were buying those things up like crazy. So it's just nice job. Well done. We're all warmed up. Opening thoughts. Whew, I never worked so hard in my life. Oh my gosh, that was tough. And it really was, unfortunately, because I was kind of put in it during a pandemic, it really was trial by fire and we we're kind of learning as we go. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a challenging time. But you think about your frontline people, all of you, all of you out there, think about your frontline people. They are, in fact, your soldiers of service. So I'm going to do 10 things that I learned from that experience. 10 things, but I really want you to know that you can apply these. It's not just a retail setting that I'm talking about here. So whether you're Spirit Mountain or whether you're a hotel, it's not just, it's not just a retail setting that we can apply these words. So look for that. Always know that anytime you do a training, my professionals, if you can take one or two things, that's success. Don't worry about taking 408 things. Just, just as we go through this presentation, I want you to be thinking about taking one or two things out of my presentation together. So number one, train, train, train. I can't emphasize, I made this number one for a reason. You really can't make the assumption that people know what to do. You have to be able to teach them different, different situations that they're going to interface with, interact with, and you have to really make sure, I really make sure, can you see this? Make sure that they outline what authority that they have with respect to dealing with issues that are on the floor. We're always working to press that authority down to the lowest level of our organization so that people are fixing those issues at their level. And I think sometimes with my experience, I knew that I could, but I didn't know exactly how to do that. And it's really important as an organization that you tell people the authority that they have to deal with situations on the floor in your organizations and to fix those. Train, train, train. The difference between training and coaching. So think about this for customer service behaviors too. If people don't know what to do, it's a training issue. If people know what to do, but choose to do something else, that's a coaching issue. If you're not seeing what you want with respect to customer service, always ask yourself this fundamental question. Is it training? They just don't know. 
from coaching, they choose not to. Remember how I talked about people have to have an incentive. They have to have an incentive to display customer service. Promote the message. Everyone is a trainer. I love this one. Heck, I love all 10. But training is not just up to the manager. Training is not just up to the assistant manager. You really want to have this, this thought in the organization that everybody can train everybody. If you've got someone that's been there three weeks longer than the new person, there's still stuff that they can teach stuff. So promote that message that everyone's a trainer. Three, strive for, if you can, proactive customer service versus reactive customer service. What, is, what does that mean? You're probably, you're probably figuring out what I'm talking about. When I went into my fleet farm gig, I really wanted to make sure that I used proactive customer service as much as I could. If I saw somebody that didn't know necessarily where to find something, I could tell that they were visibly lost. I wanted to be able to say, hey, can I help you with something? And ideally, that's what you want in your organizations. I made this beautiful graph at the kitchen table. What happens to customer service, though, when you, when you have, see, the bottom one on the x-axis is operational template. So when we get really busy, when we get really crazy, our customer service, it can suffer. So you have to just be mindful of that. But you're really always striving for being proactive versus just reacting to people when they stop you and ask you different things. Number four. Good customer service days and bad customer service days. You're going to have them. If, if, you're in a, if you're in the business of dealing with the public, the reality it is, is, you, is you're going to have good days and bad days. I did. There was some days that I was on fire and some days, especially if, again, especially if, if the tempo is, if the operational tempo is, is difficult, it would begin to suffer. You're dealing with people in person, you're dealing with people on the phone, you're dealing with people on the radio. There's all these things that are pulling you multiple directions. But having those good service days or bad days, but my whole point on that, my professionals out there is, and you tell this to your people if you lead them, is just forgive yourself for maybe not handling something the way you should. Learn from it and, and, vow, and vow to do better next time. I, uh, I remember one time this guy called me up and I had it on my phone and he, he wanted me to look for a four inch blue speckled high gloss, this very specific lure. And you have to know that Fleet Farm has thousands of lures. And I know, I know, I know, I learned from it. I was like, yeah, you should probably just come in and look for it. That's, that's wrong. It's wrong. That's not the way to handle stuff. But I, I learned from that. And uh, I'd like to believe I did better. Number five, don't be too quick with the brush off answer. Oh, think about, you know, we're all customers too, but just think about when you go in and you're asking and you're looking for certain things. And I, I, I see, I, you see people just kind of give you that quick answer and that's, that's not good customer service. Like, yeah, we're all out of those. Especially you think about the supply chain issues that we have, even though, even though you might have a legitimate explanation why we don't have something, people just want you to work with them. People just want you to be able to, to provide options. We all just want options. So teach your people not just to default to that brush off answer. When I was at Fleet Farm, I, I had, there was a young lady that started and I could see that she was falling into this, 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 uh, this pattern of just going, yeah, we're all out of those. Yeah, we're all, you know, and, and that wasn't, I, said, I took her aside. And I said, you know, I, I'm, that's awful. That's an awful fast answer. We, we could probably look into that a little bit more. We don't just have to dismiss them with this quick answer. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm not your average employee. I probably teach more than people want. But look for people in your organization too that can teach others. Remember the message? Always promote the message that everybody is a trainer in your organization. Stop here for a second, Chris. I put this in here to slow me down because sometimes I get too fast. So someone is, if someone wants to write me a question in the chat, I, I will answer it. This is my speed bump, Chris Johnson. I, I put this in here to slow me down. 
while we're waiting for a question, you have a hi from Laura from Cirrus Aircraft and a hi, Ted, from Elizabeth Maine. So. <laughs> See, that's because I knew them and I looked through my romper room magic mirror and right. I saw them. So I would sit there and she would never say, and I see Teddy. She would never say that. <laughs> I'm not seeing any questions come through. Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna give it another four seconds. Four seconds. And then we're gonna and then we're gonna move on. But if people, 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 if they don't have any questions, Chris Johnson, it, it's just really because they're hoping that you'll finish up. I don't know. No uh, questions. Okay, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Oh, Gretchen says hi, Ted. I watched Romper Room. <laughs> she did. <laughs> just me. Just Gretchen and I watched Romper Room. And not everyone has to weigh in if you would. <laughs> it was a magic mirror. It's pretty. Okay. All right. So number six. I hope somebody's. I hope you're writing down your one through ten. If you want to, by the way, when we get done, if you write me. I will send you that one through 10. If you can't keep up, he talks too much. If you can't keep up, I'll send you that one through 10. That's, that's, that's the kind of customer service I have. Keep your customer service promises. Close the loop, close the loop, close the loop. I can't, I do this every day in my own business. If I tell you that I will have something in your inbox, a proposal to look at on Monday morning, it's going to happen. Do what you say you will do on frontline customer service. If, if you say you can't talk to them right now, but you take their phone number and you're going to go look to see if they have this in stock, you have to close the loop. Everybody on those front lines, they are ambassadors of the organization. They're soldiers of service and they have to get in the habit of, of, of actually closing that loop. Number seven, all we have is each other. This is internal customer service. So we have external customer service at the people that come through the door. And then it's that internal customer service where we're all gonna take care of each other, promoting the message that everybody's a trainer, everybody's a teacher. Number eight, follow me. Here's a, here's a very specific behavior that I think about. And I really, really was pretty good about it at Fleet. But if someone wanted to know where the dog food was, I'd say, yeah, come. I mean. I must have got in 20,000 steps per day. Come on, we'll, we'll go, we'll go. Instead of, you know, some, it taking them from point A to point B. That, it's such a simple thing, but it's so critical. Some, sometimes when I go to Menards, I got to tell you, sometimes when I go to Menards, the customer service is fantastic. Sometimes I go to Menards, maybe not so much. So, hey, excuse me, where, where are the gutters? Yeah, they're over there by Proctor. Oh, so just take that. So I was thinking about this for you when I was putting this presentation together. This whole eight follow me, you know, maybe, maybe you don't have a retail floor, but what another way to look at follow me is just doing that little bit extra. Because when someone takes you to that product, isn't that just doing that little bit extra? Tetrick is forever giving himself away. I'm pretty sure that today's free. Is it, is it free, Chris Johnson? Pretty, pretty sure. So, so it's and and Sunday and Sunday night. This past Sunday, I just I just delivered a presentation up on the Iron Range, and uh, I was emceeing for frontline employees for customer service, and I I just did it for them. I just did it for them. So do do a little bit extra. It says a lot about you. It says a lot about your organization. And you know what? All that stuff, as far as I'm concerned, it comes back. It all comes back. Number nine, challenging customers. So just do this for me. Just, just raise your hand in your little Zoom room if you do have challenging customers. And maybe Chris Johnson, you can tell me if you get 408 people that raise your little hands. I'm definitely seeing a couple of them. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. I'll see more popping up. Yep. There's a good number. There is, and it, it's one of these things too, where no matter what we do, whether we're running our own businesses, or we're, whether we're the city of Duluth, or whether we're at a big box store, you're gonna have them, and you throw a pandemic in there, oh my goodness. I mean, I you are probably not surprised if you know me that I would oftentimes use humor to try to de-escalate these things. 
I'm pretty good at it. So I would try to just, people were really mad and say, Ooh, you seem kind of angry to me. So that would just kind of would deflate them. They would just say, it would just, it would change. I was always working to change their demeanor and uh, it, it worked. But so you, you, you figured out tactics to do this, but you're challenging customers that you have. I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but you're really, you're really working to get people not to say what's on the screen right now. You're really working to get people to be able to deal with things at their level. Remember how we talked about you really want to make sure that people have the authority to deal with issues on the front lines. And we've, and we've very much described what that authority looks like. Empowering people at, at the lowest level. Empathy. I have a lot of empathy for housekeepers. I have a lot of empathy. It's, it's my ability to put myself in their shoes. I, I know I have a sense of what they do. Using empathy too is such a wonderful way of de-escalating a situation. And it's, it's I'm, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but using, using empathy, people can relate to that. This is one of my favorite acronyms as it applies to defusing difficult situations. It's CARP, C-A-R-P. It's gotta be good if it's named after a rough fish. CARP, so control what you're doing and how you're being is not gonna work on me. So we never drop down to that level. Acknowledging that person is an emotional state and you're gonna use active listening and empathy to R to refocus them Think about how often it's usually another issue. Refocus them to the real issue. And then, of course, none of this works. It's be problem solved. So the P is problem solved. C-A-R-P. Diffusing difficult situations. I've hung on to this for a long time. This is, this is an article that I've had for a few years. I've always enjoyed it from Tom Wheeler, where he talks about, where he talks about customer service and how it's disappeared. And in, in the article, he says, the customer who complains is really your best friend. Now we don't necessarily always think about it that way, but, but Tom's correct. If, we, if, we, if our heart is open and our mind is open, oftentimes they're trying to tell you something that you can work on, that you can fix, that you can turn around. It's when people have apathy where they don't even bother to tell you, that's, that's where we got a problem. So if people tell you about things that you can fix and hopefully they do it in a respectful way, then, then we have the ability to improve. Thank you, Tom Wheeler. Really is your best friend. And number 10 is just a pet peeve. I threw a pet peeve in there. I, uh, it drives me nuts where we've gotten, we've gotten away from your welcome. What have we shifted? Put in your chat box. What, what, if, I, if I thank the waitress for bringing my meal, what does she say that drives me nuts? Put it in your chat box. Just saying, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. How, how did we get to no problem? How did that turn out to be the thing that we say? You got no and problem. You got two negatives. Don't make a positive. So it's, let's, can we get back to that, please? Let's, let's get back to your welcome or my pleasure. But you teach your, I mean, it's, I threw the, it's just a pet peeve of mine. So I just, please, <laughs> you're welcome. All right, you like them? Again, if I, if I went, I went through fast, don't you worry. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make this for you and I will send it to you. You just have to write me at my, at my website. Other things that I learned. Now, these are probably all presentations that are in the pipeline. So things that I'm thinking about. When I, when I had that time, again, it was, it was quite the learning experience. Other things that I learned, and I won't spend a lot of time on them, but I just really, you know, take care of your new people. This is, you probably don't even need to hear this, but it's, it's, it's easy to leave an organization if I never felt like I was a part of it. Have everybody try to bring people into the fold as quickly as they can. We already know that staffing's hard. We already know that. 
So if you get a new person, you have to really go out of your way, have people go on break with them, have people eat lunch with them, but you want to take care of those new people. I really saw during my stint at Fleet Farm the value of good direction. And really good direction takes some exercise. Right? We really have to make sure that people know what they, what's expected of them and there's follow through. If it, remember, remember too, my leaders, if you're not getting the results that you want with respect to giving direction to people, you own that. That's your fault. One of my favorite sayings, you're not catching fish. It's not the fish's fault. You own it. Good direction is a practice art. We all own our, our own motivation. I'm telling you my little stint there at Fleet Farm, I saw some people that were not very happy, not very content. You own it. We all own our own motivation. You have to figure out what you got to do. But it's not on somebody else. It's not on the organization. It's on you. Finally, in my last one, Gosh, I saw the value. I saw the value of frontline leadership, that lead you have in that organization or that frontline supervisor. Please, with me or somebody else, invest in that person so that they have the basic skill set of leading others. Because if you don't have that basic skill set of leading others and your frontline supervisors, people will lead. And you know, I've always said this, people, people, people don't quit their jobs, they quit their boss. Who's my customer today? You. So let's, let's just do this. So this, you have to warm up your fingers. I want you to tell me, tell me something that you learned. Matter of fact, I want 10 things, because I've got 50 people that are on. So 10 things, put it, put in your chat box, something that you learned today. We're still not done. We still got a little bit more to go, but something that you've learned thus far, 10 of them. Yes, I'll wait. Renee says, everyone is a trainer. Alexis says, carp. Chris says, close the loop. Marsha says, don't be too quick with a negative answer. Yes. KP says, careful of the brush off answer. Carlson says, people want options. Elizabeth says, follow me, empower your workers, difference between training and coaching. Welcome new employees. You own your own motivation. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Everyone is a trainer. They're, they're still rolling in. Empower them. Give authority to people to deal with things at their level, yep. proactive versus reactive. Close the loop. Yeah. yeah. I'm so proud. You got it. I mean, that's that's the stuff that I want you to take away. It's something tangible. I always know that any training that you go to, any conference, if you can pull one or two, you've had a good day. Okay, we're not quite done. I just want to talk a little bit more about something. Your soldiers of surface, your your, your front line, in the trenches, people. I I can't. You know, it was what an experience, what an education at my time at Fleet Farm. Is it? Is it? Is it the best use of Ted's talents? Probably not. This is. But I looked at that obstacle and I looked at it as an opportunity. And I'd get home every night and I would journal all the things that I was learning because I knew that someday I was going to tell you all about, about this experience. So look at it. You know, stuff happens to all of us. But if you, if you do have that obstacle, just, just look at it as an opportunity. Are there barriers to good customer service? Heck, we could probably do a whole different presentation on this, and we won't. But if you're, if you're not getting the customer service that you want in your organization, you have to ask yourself, again, some very fundamental questions. Remember how we talked about, does everyone have, have an incentive to display it? There you start there. But customer service and having good customer service in your organization is so much based on how they feel about the, the organization as a whole. If they feel valued and cared about and they're paid well, that's gonna permeate and that's gonna spill over to good customer service. A message for my leadership. 
I'll have to tell you that I do all my own artwork for my presentation. So I'm, that's me all the way to all the way to the end there. I'm, I'm the, I'm the empowered employee. So, and if, if you, if you want, if you, correction, I'm the, I'm the customer. <laughs> if you want happy, loyal customers, you have to have engaged, empowered employees. And in order to have that, you really have to, you have to have that competent, attentive leadership. So remember how I, I keep coming back to leadership, but that's, it, it all starts, it all starts at that point. And then that spills over to good customer service. Mary Kay, everyone has an invisible sign around their neck saying, make me feel important. Never forget that message when working with people. It's paying attention. It's paying attention to your employees. And it's paying attention to your customers. Attitude, behaviors, incentive. We talked about that. We spent a lot of time today talking about behaviors. If you've not defined those behaviors in your organization, you can. It doesn't have to be 400 pages, but you should, you should be able to define in your organization how to talk on the phone, how to deal with people in person, and how to deal with challenging situations. You can define those specifically for your organization. Those four pillars, I'm all about them. I love them. When I when I did the uh, I did Spirits of Hospitality Award up there in the Iron Range on Sunday, we we spent a little time talking about these experience. Do people have an experience with you? Absolutely. You're having an experience right now. Right, wrong, or indifferent, people have an experience with you. You think about think about going into that experience pipeline. We have to always remember too that people have options. People have options. If we always remember that people have options, that keeps us sharp. There's a lot of speakers out there. You better be on your game. Making sure that the experience doesn't falter. You think about loyalty and where loyalty is. Loyalty is not only the bad experience. I always think about this too. Bad experience or good experience? Which one do people talk more about? Bad experience or a good experience? Which one do people talk most about? It's the bad one, right? You can't wait to tell people how poorly I was treated. And that zone of indifference, you don't want to be there. That zone of indifference is like, eh, it, was, eh, it was okay. It was better than a stick in the eye. Ooh, you don't want to be there. So a bad experience or the zone of indifference, always making sure that you're, you're on the right side. Relationships, people do business with people they know. I will take it a step further. People do business with people they like. Knowing those names, doing your homework, knowing my customer makes me better, you knowing your customer makes you better, and knowing names, knowing people's names. Hi, Wendy. She's out there. She's out there right now. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, on a regional jet, one of those little small jets, this is prior to the pandemic. And I was, I was out West and I was traveling and there was a new flight attendant and I could tell she was new. She was doing a really great job and she was working really hard. And she was walking down the aisle with her beverage cart and she was looking at the numbers and she had her little passenger manifest with her. And she got, she got right even with me. She got right even with, with her cart. And she looked at me and she said, Oh, would you like to drink, Theodore? I said, you know what? People don't call me Theodore enough. But it made a difference. I've never in all the years that I've been flying had anybody call me by my name, especially my, my birth name. <laughs> so, connection, the ability to connect makes all the difference. Reputation, we all have one. I have one. You have one. Individually, you have one. Your organization has one. I think about the DMV. <laughs> If I say the DMV, what do you think of? Ugh. People that are miserable, long lines. Well, I got a tip for you. Go to the one in Cloquet. Oh, they're fantastic. They're bright. The, the, everyone's friendly behind the counter. They know how to talk to people. Word of mouth. Word of mouth is still king. I've been, if you know anything about me, I've been trying to use social media a lot more. You probably see I've been, I've been doing my videos and, and that's, those are all good. And those are all important. And those are all things that you need to do in order to remind people that you're still out here. But I am, I am well aware that that the stuff that keeps me buoyed, it's word of mouth. Same with you. Your reputation is people talking about you. And of course, problem 
problem solving and solution. People come to you because you can fill a need. I thought this is a really cool article that I saw in the Duluth News Tribune, where it talked about how kids today, Generation Z, aren't really getting summer jobs like they used to. Now, my generation, 60% of kids had summer jobs. And today's kids, it's about 30%. And there's all sorts of reasons. None of them are bad, but there's all sorts of reasons that kids aren't getting summer jobs. I mean, sports, school. In this article, you see down in the corner that one of the parents say, well, the parents were telling the kids, well, you have the rest of your life to work. You can wait a while, which is, I guess, a fair argument. But, but what, are kids, what are kids not getting? What are kids not getting when they don't have those summer jobs? Go ahead, go ahead and clack it in your clack it in your chat box. What are, what are kids not getting if they don't have? I, I had like 12, 12 jobs before I even joined the Navy. What are they not getting? Responsibility, yep. people skills, social skills, yep. experience yep. working with others, mm -hmm. work yep. ethic. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it, it's those soft skills. I'm, I'm always talking about hard skills versus soft skills, and we can't take this stuff for granted. I would, you know, if I were king of the world, every young person, every high school person would have a gig in customer service just for a little while. Why? Because we all serve someone. We all spend the rest of our lives serving someone. I'm serving you right now. And that's important that they learn that that's how it works. Those soft skills. You think about all the different kind of non-tangible skills that people will learn when they have those summer jobs. How to get along with others. How to be resourceful. Problem solving. And look at the bottom one. Look at the bottom one. Customer service. You can learn a lot by taking the trash out. <laughs> My dad would say, it builds character. It builds character. Spend that time on training, folks. Do not make the assumption. Do not make the assumption that people know what to do as it applies to customer service. People think it's common knowledge, and I guess it is, but there are a lot of times where people are not employing it. Make sure that you spend that time teaching people what they need to do. Do you like what you do? Gosh, I hope so. Do I like what I do? Absolutely. Would I much rather be with you? Yes. Because when I speak in my living room, I just scare the cat. Really, so I do. But you're performing. You are performing. I am performing. And when it comes to customer service, it truly is. It truly is a performance. I, I talk about the concept of what it means to be professional all the time. First and foremost, wouldn't you agree with me? Customer service and professionalism go hand in hand. Go hand in hand. It's doing the things that you love to do, even on the days you don't feel like doing them. That's what it means to be a professional, and that's what it means to be customer service. Oh. Look, Chris Johnson, we have a test. Okay, everybody, 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 unmute yourself, and so you can just yell. This probably won't work, Chris. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, we'll just see. We'll try it. <laughs> All right. If the speaking thing doesn't work out, Tay can get a job at. The Minouette. Yes. <laughs> Spirit Mountain. <laughs> Sleep farm. Sleep farm. Would they take me back? I don't, I don't know that they'd take me back. Okay. When Ted worked at Fleet Farm, you could find him. Where was I? Women's shoes? Huh? Where was I? Sporting goods. I was. I was. You would have found me hiding amongst the fishing rods. So. True or false, Mary Kay says everyone has a sign around their neck saying, help me get the sign off my neck. False. 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 What the sign said is, is, is make me feel important. Your customers need that. You need that. Don't forget, too, if we, if we work with keep our employees valued, that spills over. That spills over to good customer service. People don't quit their jobs. They quit their... Boss. Yep. I, I like the probiotic though. No, I do that in there. Ted's real birth name is, it's not Chris Johnson. Don't Theodore. It is, it is. There's not enough Theodores in the world. Can I just say that? 
Now, you guys don't know that, but one of the top, top baby names in Duluth, Minnesota for 2020 was Theodore. It's coming back. <laughs> 60 years, but it's coming back. Which of the following was always at was always in stock at Fleet Farm? Andy. Andy. I know, I know, I, I know, I, I ate it every day. And Ted wants to bring back. What do I want to bring back? What do I want to bring back? Although, you're well, welcome. welcome. You're welcome. Yep, you're welcome. Not, not, no problem. Drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, I know it's no problem. I just spent money here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you, you're the first. You're the first audience that I have ever shown this to. But I have my own QR code. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Come a long way. So I'm going to, I'm going to, and I will not besiege you with thousands of things, but I'm going to, I'm going to have a, a newsletter and we're going to, I'm going to try to give you little tidbits to make your life a little bit better. So you, all you got to do is hold your phone up and don't be like me and take a picture of it. Just hold your <laughs> phone up with the camera on and it, it actually will, will give you a little form to fill out. But again, you're under no obligation. You're, you're under no obligation. But I am going to I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better about not just the craft side of my business, but also the business side of my business. So I know you have to go. I'm here for you. I will be the last one to log off in case you wanted to stop and talk to me. And uh, I'm going to, after, after everyone logs off, I'm going to go to Crookston, Minnesota. Don't try to stop me. So that's where I'm headed. So. I'm here if you wanted to kind of ask me a question or, or I know you have to get back to work too. So it was nice having you here. Okay. And if you do have to go wave goodbye to me. So. Hey, Ted, question for you. Will you send me that QR code and I can send it out? It's not working on the screen here. Is it? It is not. Okay. I was kind of wondering if that would be the case. That's all right. Maybe it, maybe because it's just too many. What do you think, Chris Johnson? It's just, it's just too many screens. <laughs> It might be. Well, we're seeing a lot of thank yous, a lot of safe drives. Thank you, Theodore. <laughs> um, you know what? You, pro you provided some really great tangibles today, so we really appreciate it. Um, for those still watching, we did record this session, so it will be available to you if you wanted to rewatch it, if you wanted to send it to your fellow coworkers, um, or contact Ted, of course, if you have questions or follow up, or if you want that list of, of 10 that he was referring to. So thank you so much for being here, Ted. Thank you so much for everyone that was able to attend. And I might just leave this on for another minute to see if yep. there are yep. questions yep. that pop up. Yep, yep, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pause here because sometimes people will ask me, like I said, Chris, who cuts my hair? And they'll wanna know, so. <laughs> I mean, they all do. <laughs> I'm not seeing that come through yet. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes it does, it takes a while. <laughs> but I am seeing a lot of, um, gratitude, a lot of thanks for the message. So. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.